Hi and welcome back to our channel where we share exciting travel destinations and experiences. In today's video we are taking you to one of the most romantic cities in Italy, where getting lost is kind of part of the deal, as well as taking a boat ride is a must. Beautiful Venice. But before we show you around and must see places, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you are not missing out on any of our travel videos. Venice is a cluster of small islands located just off the mainland. To get from the airport or Venezia Mestre train station, you can either take the bus, the train or a water taxi. If you have a car, you can drive onto the island and park at one of several parking lots and parking garages near Piazza La Roma. If you're arriving into Marco Polo Airport and you're looking for options to get to Venice, you have an option to choose from between a bus or a water taxi. The cheapest and easiest way to travel between the airport and the city centre is the bus. The ATVO Express bus is a direct non-stop bus that will take you to the main bus station, Piazza La Roma, in just 20 minutes. The buses are very reliable and the price is only 8 euros. The tickets can be purchased at the airport, at the ATVO machines or online. You can also take a local ACTV bus line number 5 which will get you to the bus terminal Piazza La Roma in approximately 35 minutes. But bear in mind that it is a small local bus that has several stops on the way and it is usually crowded, so traveling with luggage can be a hassle. Tickets for this bus are cheaper and can be bought at the newspaper stands. The local boat line runs from the airport to the city center and stops in front of St. Mark's Square with several stops on the way. So it does take a bit longer, around an hour and a half, to get from the airport to the Venice, and the price is around 15 euros. We have decided to stay in one of the three-star hotels located around 10 minutes walk from the Piazza La Roma and in very close proximity to the main attractions. But first things first, put down your map and just wander. Forget the big popular sites because we will get there soon. The smaller canals of the main tourist tray are perfect for wandering. The main city of Venice is small enough that you can walk in it several hours. Explore the canals, sit and relax in small squares, or just go cafe hopping for coffee or wine. Just enjoy the city without feeling like you have to check the bunch of sites off your to-do list. It's almost a rule why you're in Venice to get lost, literally. We've done that several times and every time you're finding a little gem like a coffee shop or nice restaurant where you can just sit and enjoy life passing by. So make sure that you put down that map at least for a moment. Venice during the summer months is very hot and humid with early to mid-August being the peak. Light clothing and comfortable walking shoes are highly recommended. Venice sees millions of visitors each year and the bulk of that is during the summer months. So be prepared for long lines and hundreds of people walking the narrow streets. But this is really what makes Venice trip so unique. Venice could also be seen within a single day trip. I honestly wouldn't recommend spending more than probably two, three days here. Again, the city is really small and you can see all the top tourist destinations within the two days and still have time to have a nice walk around the streets, enjoy lovely stops at the cafes, restaurants, and just simply feeling the vibe of Venice City.
St. Mark's Square, as well as being the largest open space in Venice, it also creates this big contrast to the narrow streets. Also, St. Mark's Square is one of the lowest places in Venice. It is one of the first places in the city to be underwater during the frequent floods, which is called Aqua Alta. Usually, it is only a few centimeters. However, during the extreme floods, the Piazza San Marco or parts of it can be no longer accessible. Aqua Alta is particularly frequent in winter. The foot bridges for pedestrians are built at St. Mark's Square during high water. The two most important buildings on the square are the Doge's Palace and St. Mark's Basilica. But keep in mind guys, when you're planning on visiting St. Mark's Basilica, make sure to get there very early, otherwise uh, the queues are basically insane. So if you want to have a walk around, make sure that you book that too early. If you've been in Italy before, then you know it's foodies paradise. I absolutely adore the cuisine in Italy. So you must try different types of food, but don't forget, make sure you try some pastries as well. They have my favorite cannolis, which we first tried in Sicily. So you need to make sure that you try them. We then moving on to one of the most iconic scenes in Venice, the Rialto Bridge. Enjoy this iconic view of the city and see it at sunrise, at sunset, join the crowds of tourists in the middle of the day, watching the gondolas, vaporettos and ferries traveling up and down the Grand Canal from this spot is just simply mesmerizing. Foodies will enjoy the food markets where the freshest food in all Venice is sold each day, usually to the restaurants in the area. The vegetable stands are also excellent produce, which is much fresher and more varied than at any supermarket. And I must admit, I couldn't resist buying delicious strawberries. If it's your first visit in Venice, then you're probably wondering how much does the gondola ride cost? That's a very good question. The city of Venice sets the rate at 80 euros per 40 minutes, 100 euros after 7 pm, but that doesn't mean that's the rate you will get. You will have to negotiate with your gondolier before you ride. Make sure you agree on the price and the length of the time you will ride before you get in the gondola. And if you would like to have him sing you a song, that will obviously cost extra. And while we're on the subject of gondolas, the Squero di San Trovaso is where they are created and where some of them are going for a makeover. Tucked away in the corner of Dorso Duro and seconds from the Zatere, the workshop is not a tourist attraction as such, 
but a living slice of Venetian history, an authentic working boatyard dating back to the 17th century. Thank you for watching today's vlog from Venice. I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave the comment below so you're not missing out on any of our travel videos. We really appreciate your support. We'll take you to the next destination very soon. Stay tuned.